Hi, I'm Lucy Gunatilika. Um, how to sleep better is one of the top search terms, not just in the UK, but in the whole world. Which means at any point in time, there's millions of people who think they should be sleeping better. If you look at Blip Photo, you'll see how people are documenting how they're using self-harm to cope with things that are happening in their lives. And on Twitter, there's so many people who are expressing their emotions, how they're feeling, looking for a bit of acknowledgement from their followers, or just trying to maybe feel a bit more normal. And on Facebook, you've probably got lots of friends who really like to document exactly what's happening to them, all the bad things in the moment, just kind of a constant stream, maybe trying to just get some sympathy or some empathy from their friends or family. And we've all probably at midnight, three o'clock in the morning, been searching on Google for something like, why am I so anxious? Why am I so worried? Why aren't I sleeping? You know, searching on these health websites, trying to find out kind of what's, what's happening. And we've all probably used forums where we've seen a topic which is kind of as boring as mortgages, being segued into a topic about somebody's marital breakdown, where they're trying to find other people who this is happening to, trying to find a sense of normality in what's happening to them, and trying to find connection. And what's a bit rubbish about this is that people are using technology for their mental health. That's really clear. But the technology itself is really not optimized for it. So it might make people feel a bit better in the moment. It might make them feel, OK, a bit more normal, feel a bit more connected. But the actual technology itself isn't having a positive impact. So if you were to go and see a psychologist, and I'm not suggesting that any of you are, but if you were going to see one, they'd ask you a bunch of questions about your life. So they'd ask things like, how are you sleeping? How's your mood? How's your relationship with other people? How energetic are you feeling? How lethargic? And what they're trying to do by asking you those questions is see what's happening in your life and see if there's connections between those different things. The technology doesn't do that. It doesn't tell you how those things are connected together in your life. Now, we all know that people do use technology. I've just described how many people use technology for their mental health. And even more people use it for their physical health. So, you know, lots of people use uh, exercise trackers. They track their food. They track their sleep. You know, this is kind of not, this isn't news. This is really common. Um, and, and so, yeah, so people are doing this, and that's really, really acceptable. And if, I'm sure there's probably quite a few runners in this room. Um, I go running, not that often, but sometimes. And um, if you're a runner, you might track your exercise in some way. So you might track it using a mobile app, or you might use an Excel spreadsheet or something. And what's quite interesting is that some of those products do something really interesting at the end of your run. They'll ask something like, how, how did that go? How are you feeling? And if you're anything like me, you'll answer that question something like, oh, didn't sleep very well, felt really lethargic, oh, it was really rubbish, can't be bothered. Or another day, it might be something like, felt really excited, really energetic, it went really well. And what I'm doing when I'm doing that is I'm connecting my mood and my emotion to my exercise, to my running. Now imagine if you could flip that round, and if you could start to think about how if you collected your mood and your uh, emotion, how it could connect to the other things in your life. So imagine if we could actually do that for people, if we could connect together the different parts of their life correlate together the things which is happening to them so that they can get insight about all of these things happening and maybe take more control of their life, feel like they're coping a bit more. So, yeah, I work on a project called Ginsburg for Scottish Government and we're pretty much trying to do that. We're trying to make visible those things which are really invisible in people's lives. So the mood, the emotion and how it connects to other things. That's not something that any of us know about, really. You know, none of us have that insight or that intuition about ourselves. So it's really great to externalize it. 
And by that I mean we be connecting together anything from how alcohol affects your mood to how going out with your bunch of friends affects your energy levels two days later. And we don't just want to do that. What we also want to do is think about the technology itself and think about if there's ways that technology in itself can be really positive. And by that I mean, for example, if you journal, it's a really good way of externalizing what's happening to you. You can really kind of just get out those emotions, those mood, those experiences, and reflect on it, and over time actually kind of see how you're dealing with things. Mood tracking as well was really, really good. If you track your mood, it actually has a positive impact on it. It actually improves your mood, which is amazing. So we're trying to think about those things as well, not just connecting people's, the things in people's lives together, but also thinking about the technology itself. And I just want to return back to the beginning and that audience of people who I described who are using technology for their mental health. There's a whole bunch of other people who are in just as much distress as, that, as those people who feel like they aren't coping, um, they don't feel in control of their life, but they're not using technology for their mental health. They're using technology for everything else, but they're not using it for mental health because maybe it's too public or it's just not appropriate. So what we're trying to do is build a product for them as well. Now, we're looking to launch uh, Ginsberg in April, and we would love it if any of you want to try it out because um, we're looking for beta testers. So thank you very much. <laughs>